This preacher explains to a room full of seminary students about both their need and the importance of the entire Bible. Watch this. Brothers, the Bible for us and even for our people cannot be just a hobby. It cannot be just a curiosity. I'm just interested in this thing. For us, it cannot be just one of your many interests that you list on a social media page because the Bible is not just one of many. It's not just something we fiddle around with or peruse or investigate or analyze. The Bible is what we need more than what we need. That's what our attitude has to be. And when we are not in the word of God, we feel it. We understand we are disconnected from our source of spiritual food and we languish because we've been disconnected from this. We feel that more than when we don't eat or drink. We feel a disconnection and emaciation when we do not have our spiritual food in the word of God. What we must understand and what Paul demonstrated here is that the Bible, the Bible is what you need more than what you need. That's why we do what we do. We are desperate to have it and cannot live without it. That's what we must remember. Can you ever imagine your life without the Word of God as your source of spiritual food and sustenance? Can you imagine yourself just for a day not gazing into the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ in Scripture? I can think of such a thing myself. I need the Word of God every day in my life. I need to meditate upon it. I need to read it, think about it, and more importantly, apply it to my everyday life. When tough times come around and problems rear their ugly heads in my life, the Word of God has comfort for my soul. When things do not turn out the way I expected them, to, I can only take refuge in God's word. Who can better teach me to hope in Yahweh in this weary life other than the prophets of scripture? What can set my mind at peace other than the promises of God in the New Testament for those who are in Christ Jesus? It is the word of God that makes my soul still in the midst of the storm because Yahweh reigns. Who can tell me where and in whom my refuge is in this dark world other than the psalmist in Psalm 27, Psalm 46, and Psalm 91? It is the word that sanctifies me, purifies me, guards my heart against the evil of this world. Some people think they need some of the Word of God, but I don't know about you. I need all of the Word of God. I need the entirety of God's Word to saturate my life and run over into the life of others around me. Why do you need the book of Genesis? Nowadays, if you don't have the book of Genesis, you don't even know what a woman is. That's where we're going. And why do you need Exodus to understand salvation? Why do you need Leviticus to know the holiness of God? Why do you need Numbers to understand how God refines and disciplines? Why do you need Deuteronomy to know the love of God? Why do you need Joshua to know that God will conquer the world? Why do you need Judges and Ruth and First and Second Samuel to know that redemptive history is moving to the Messiah, to the Lord Jesus Christ? Why do you need Isaiah to understand the plan of God and the gospel and how that will triumph and Ezekiel, the presence of God? And you need the gospels to understand the gospel and Acts, the church, and Ephesians and Philippians and James and Hebrews to take our stand as the church in doctrine and for Christ and in our testimony. And the list can go on and on and on and on and on. Every single book, every single passage of scripture is unique. It is all different. It is all purposed by God. It is all profitable. And therefore, it is all necessary. And therefore, because it is all necessary for all life and godliness to face every single challenge, aspect, trial, problem, question, situation, activity, dilemma, difficulty, as well as any kind of issue of our existence, you need all of this, not just some, all. And Paul, in his dying days, he didn't just have one passage he needed to go to, he needed to go to his Bible. He needed it all. And he said, Timothy, bring it all. I need it all. Remember the man on death row. He did not just go to one text. He went to the text. He had it all. Brothers, he had just told Timothy in the previous chapter, all scripture is God breathed and what? Profitable. And then what does he do? He lives it. So bring me all my Bible. Bring me the whole. The whole of the Bible is inspired. So bring me my whole Bible, not just one scroll, every scroll. Timothy, I need them all. Bring them to me, brothers. We are whole Bible expositors. 
Here at the Master Seminary, we are trained so that every book and every passage and every verse and every word flows through our veins. That if you prick us, we bleed Bible and we are ready to minister that all sufficient truth in its totality to our people. There are people out there depending on you and me to be that way. Don't forget the man in prison. Don't forget the man on death row. When it was the darkest time, he said, I need my Bible and I need it all. I need it all. Give it all to me. That's what he wanted. Imagine those were your final hours, or as the saying goes, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do with them? What would you have your family bring to you? What would you ask your wife or your husband for? Maybe you would ask for your favorite meal, your favorite music, you would probably request to read your favorite novel, or you'd want to watch your favorite movie or TV show of all time. Where would your heart and mind be during those final hours? Would you be thinking about your loved ones? Would you be thinking about your life's accomplishments? Would you be thinking about your gold, your money, and your possessions? Would you even think to ask someone to bring you your Bible just to gaze one last time, one final time, at the glory of God? Would you remember to sing the scriptures, to pray the scriptures? You see, the final hours of a man's life reveals where his heart truly is. It truly unveils what he holds dear in life. I think it would be foolish for anyone to spend the final hours away from the voice of God in scripture. It would be unwise for someone to have their mind preoccupied by anything other than the beauty, the splendor, the joy, and the peace that the word of God brings. The apostle John says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of men, but of God. And the the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. That is the beauty of the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the glory of the Word of God. Would you, in your final hours, gaze one last time, look one last time at the glory and the beauty of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Bible? What is most important? what is most essential, what is necessary. He not only needs this, he needs it now. It can't wait. He can't do without it. It is massive. It is life or death. He will have major setbacks without it. He is completely dependent upon it. It's desperate. It's the first thing in his mind. That's the kind of question that this situation sets up for. That's the kind of necessity. That's the kind of need. That's the kind of direness and urgency to the situation. And so what might you need? This is one of the most important kinds of questions in this life, one that addresses our needs. This is no trivial question at all. We need to ponder on this, reflect on this, and think of our greatest need in this life in order to carefully and wisely answer this question. What is it that you need, my friend? Is it a promotion, a raise, a husband, a wife, or possibly the sweet blessing of children? What is it that your heart longs for? The Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick, who can understand it? The things that our heart longs for seldom reflect the things from above. Our desires most times contradict the will of God, but what we are in dire need of is God. We need to hear and speak to us in scripture. We need our heart to be purged by the word. We need to be submerged in both the Old and New Testament in order to ultimately know who God is according to his word. The Apostle Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with gratefulness in your hearts to God. The word of God is what we truly need. The word of scripture is what nourishes our soul. Paul said, and remember the man in death row, cloak is useful. Everyone understands how desperate that would be. Everyone understands how helpful it would be. And Paul says, 
but give me my Bible. That's what I really want. That's what I really need. The Bible is what you need. Furthermore, second, you need all your Bible. You need all of your Bible. That's the second point. Notice the next words. Bring to me not only the cloak, but the scrolls. The scrolls. What's a scroll? Well, it's a roll of writing material, often papyrus, but could also be all kinds of material, as we'll see. It could be animal skills, skins and vellum and the like. And the word can also be used abstractly to denote what is composed or the content of what is written upon these physical writing materials. And so that's why sometimes it's translated as a book or a volume. And in scripture, whether you're dealing with the physical scroll or whether you're dealing with what it abstractly contains, there is a predominant usage that it is talking about scripture. Galatians 3.10, Hebrews 9.19, this is the book of the law. The scroll of Isaiah is mentioned in Luke chapter 4, verse 17 and 20. The scroll that is is describing prophecies is, is discussed in Hebrews chapter 10 and the book of Revelation is mentioned in Revelation 1 11. and so sure sure to be fair could these scrolls be blank could these scrolls contain Paul's personal correspondence could these scrolls contain a lot of different records or the like for Paul yes for the sake of argument they could but the entire usage of scripture on this word, and in fact, as we will see shortly enough, the very practice of people at this time, because these scrolls were so expensive, was to preserve one thing and to focus on one thing alone, and that's the Bible. That's the Bible. Now, within this, notice that Paul says, give me not just a scroll, give me what? The scrolls, plural. And that's important. It's pretty simple for Timothy. You go to my house or you go to Carpus's house and you just find every single scroll and you bring it to me. That helps. What it also accentuates is this. What's the only book that Paul really owned? His Bible. He wasn't just believing in Sola Scriptura. His possessions were Sola Scriptura. The guy was Sola Scriptura because it was so important to him. And the phrase, the books, or the phrase, the scrolls, is a phrase even in the Old Testament and specifically the Greek translation of the Old Testament for the entire Old Testament. Paul said, bring me, bring me my Bible. Bring me the whole Old Testament. And in fact, because at that time, uh, people have recorded that individuals like Paul, if they knew that they were writing scripture, may have kept a carbon copy of their writings. It may have even included his epistles to different churches as well. And so what you have is the canon henceforth formed. He says, bring that to me, bring that to me. He didn't just want part of his Bible. He wanted all of it. He wanted all of it. And that's an important truth. My friends, there are many religious books in this world. There's the Quran, there's the Book of Mormon, there's the Book of Enoch, there are books on New Age and spirituality, but only the Bible contains the word of the true living God. Only the Bible contains the mind of Christ. And more importantly, this book talks about the redemption that we have in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Any sinner can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ by the proclamation of the gospel found in scripture. We need the Bible, we need the word of God. If God is our greatest need, if Christ is our greatest need, then his word must also be our greatest need. So do not take this book lightly. Dwell in it, meditate upon it, and enrich your life with the content of this book. This is it for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. The name of the pastor is Abner Chow. If this is your first time on the Gospel of Christ YouTube channel, I hope you subscribe. If not, I hope to see you on our next video with Love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.